Fellas, Hamzat Chamaev is going to be facing Robert Whittaker in a fight night. And then in the core main event, we've got Sergei Pavlovich returning. It's an unexpected heavyweight opponent. And then the rest of the main card is absolutely stacked. I'm going to be predicting every single fight on this main card. Starting off with the first main card fight announcement. We've got Sharaputin Magomedov coming back against Ihor Portieria. Yeah, now this is a... St I don't want to say it's a big step up in competition for Sharaputin Magomedov, to be honest. Portieria... He hasn't had the most consistent UFC record. In fact, he's lost three times by knockout. And his only wins are coming off Shogun. And obviously, his most recent fight where he got a unanimous decision win. But overall, I do think it's a little bit of a step down in competition from Bruno Silva. And I was hoping that Sharaputi Magomedov was going to get, you know, another big fight. Maybe close to the rankings of the middleweight division. But we get to see Sharaputi Magomedov back in there. And I think he's going to put on another kickboxing masterclass just like he did against Bruno Silva. I think he's going to get the finish within three rounds because like I said we saw even before his UFC debut we knew this guy had some of the slickest kickboxing in in MMA you know his kickboxing was insane and then we saw him against Bruno Silva the way he was piecing him apart even even though his ground game might not be the best even though he might not have the most um, you know the most dominant ground game even on the ground on his back he was using those elbows so effectively against Bruno Silva so I think the fact that we get to see Sharputin Magomedov back on a fight night main event against Portieria I think he's going to do a lot of damage and I think we're going to see another Sharaputin Magomedov win. And hopefully from there, we get to see Sharaputin Magomedov finally fight a ranked opponent. But yeah, that's not the only fight on this card. We also got announced that Johnny Walker, the guy who's just been slept by Magomed Ankalaev, he's going to be returning again against Volkan Uzdemir. Yeah, this is a big step down in competition. Volkan Uzdemir, he's, he's meh. And I feel like this is going to be another win for uh, for Johnny Walker. I feel like Johnny Walker's perfect around the top five area. Whereas Volkan Uzdemir... I'm just not sure he's, 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 he's a top light heavyweight anymore. He once was a top light heavyweight. I'm just not sure he is anymore, but it's going to be really interesting to see. I don't think it's going to be a boring fight. I think it's going to be very competitive on the feet, but I'm overall picking Johnny Walker to get this win. Volkan Uzdemir, yeah, he's, he's coming off a finish, but you look at the rest of the middle at the light heavyweights, he's not been doing good. He, he got knocked out by Yuri. He lost to Anka Live. He, he lost to Nikita Krylov as well. And his only win before that was Paul Craig, which wasn't that impressive because Paul Craig looked horrible in that fight. So I'm going Johnny Walker to win this fight, and I think he's going to get it done by decision. Um, I don't think it's too quick of a comeback because he fought in January and now he's coming back in June. So he's had plenty of time to make a comeback. Um, but yeah, Johnny Walker, I think he's going to outpoint Volkan Uzdemir, to be honest. I think it's going to be somewhat competitive. I think Uzdemir is definitely going to look for the grappling exchanges, which he's just not going to get against Walker. And even though Walker's back in the desert, hopefully this time he doesn't have any problems in the desert and he doesn't forget where he is. So I'm going Johnny Walker to win this fight by a decision. But let me know your thoughts on the fights that have been announced so far. I want to know I want to know you like discuss your opinions on these fights because for a fight night, this is absolutely incredible. I mean, we just had Johnny Walker headline a fight night. So to go from headlining a fight night to now being not even the featured fight on it just because you got one loss... Um, I think that's crazy, and this could easily push Johnny Walker back into the top five, back in the title picture in the light heavyweight division, if he gets an impressive win, so I'm picking Johnny Walker to win this fight. Then we have the featured fight of the night, Kelvin Gastelum versus Daniel Rodriguez. I mean, already this could have been the main event for the fight night, and I would have been happy. Kelvin Gastelum versus Daniel Rodriguez. Now, before I talk about the fight, I, am I mistaking Daniel Rodriguez for someone else, or didn't this guy get popped for steroids? Maybe it wasn't that serious, but I could have sworn that Daniel Rodriguez got popped for like performance enhancing drugs or something like that. So I didn't expect to see him back. Um, but either way, D-Rod versus Gastelum. I think Gastelum's got this in the bag, but it's going to be a scrap. Both of these guys tend to come to scrap. Daniel Rodriguez, again, not the most consistent fighter. I feel like he's always around that top 15 area of the middleweight division. He's not good enough to progress into the rankings, but at the same time, he's always good enough to, you know, just about scrape around the rankings area. And then Kelvin Gastelum, he's coming off a, a kind of a bad loss to Sean Brady, which isn't bad because Sean Brady's one of the best grapplers in the middleweight division. But my picks for this fight is that it's going to be very, very similar to Kelvin Gastelum versus Chris Curtis in the sense that I think it's going to be a scrap, but Kelvin, Kelvin Gastelum is going to come out with a win. Um, and yeah, that's my prediction for the fight. I think, obviously, we've seen from Daniel Rodriguez in the past. He has, he, I mean, he got finished by Neil Magny recently and finished by Ian Gary. Before that, he had a very, very like close win over Li Jingliang, which a lot of people thought he shouldn't have shouldn't have got the win. He hadn't finished any fighter since 2021. Kelvin Gastelum, I'm not going to sit here and act like he's the most consistent middleweight right now on the roster, but at the same time, I think he's got what it takes to come off with a win. He's coming off a loss to, to Sean Brady, but you've got to realise as well, he came off a very good win over, short, uh, over Chris Kerr. 
Curtis at UFC 287. I'm picking Gastelum to win. I think stylistically, it's a very, very favorable fight for him. So, yeah, I'm going Kelvin Gastelum. Then we've got the core main event. Like I said, we've got the return of Sergei Pavlovich, and he's going to be facing Alexander Volkov. Now, I could have sworn that Alexander Volkov was just announced to fight Jailton Almeida in, like, I think it was, like, UFC 302. Did that fight not fall through? I thought Volkov was going to be fighting Jelton Armada. So now we've got Pavlovich versus Volkov, which I do not mind. But my main question is, what about Cyril Garn? Cyril Garn, who's he going to be fighting? Is he going to be fighting Jelton Armada himself? I mean, that's a much diff more difficult fight than a Pavlovich for Garn. But anyway, Pavlovich versus Volkov. Yeah, this is going to be another test for Pavlovich on the feet because it's not another short, fat heavyweight for Pavlovich to run over. Obviously, he's just been knocked out by Tom Aspinall. And he's going to be facing another tall, lanky Russian in Alexander Volkov, who can also grapple, by the way. He's also a decent grappler, is Volkov, coming off a submission win over Tatu Ivarza. I know that's not the highest caliber opponent, but it's still a win. So we're going to be, we're going to be seeing Sergei Pavlovich get tested again. Listen, if Pavlovich can go out there and finish Volkov in one round like he's done to a lot of the other heavyweights, that's when Pavlovich gets pushed right back into the title picture and should get put into a number one contender fight and then he can get, if he wins that fight, he can get another fight with Aspinall. And if Volkov can beat Pavlovich, I think Volkov deserves a title shot. I don't care if Aspinall's the champion and I know Aspinall destroyed Volkov a few years ago. But Volkov's on a three-fight winning streak all by way of finish. If he can beat Sergei Pavlovich, the only other guy in the UFC to beat Pavlovich outside of, obviously, um, a few years ago, Overeem and currently Aspinall, then Volkov deserves a shot. Overall, this is one of the more interesting fights in the heavyweight division. I've always said I'm not a fan of the heavyweights when you get past the top 10 because it tends to be sloppy, short-fat heavyweights. But this is definitely one of the better fights in the heavyweight division. Pavlovich and Volkov. I can't wait for this fight. So yeah, I'm predicting. I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna go with Pavlovich to win this one. I think he'll get a finish in the first two, but it would not surprise me if Volkov, do, uh, you know, gets the upset and manages to get the winner. So I'm picking Pavlovich in the first two rounds, and then the main event. You'd already. You'd think this is like pay per view level, like a, a pay per view level card already. Robert Whittaker versus Hamzat Chemaev. Um, I thought Shumayev was going to be facing Adesanya. I thought that was already announced for Saudi Arabia, but apparently not. Maybe Adesanya is going to be taking off even more time. But Whitaker versus Shumayev, yeah, that is a fight that that I'm really intrigued to see. Obviously, I think if Whitaker gets this win over a guy, sorry, if Shumayev gets this win over a guy like Whitaker, immediately give him a title shot, right? It's got to the point where Shumayev, he's definitely one fight away from a title shot, and Whitaker's a very, very difficult opponent. This isn't just another easy opponent. It's not like we're giving Hamzat Shumayev an easy middleweight contender to give him an immediate title shot. Whitaker is not easy. First of all, he just looked great against Paulo Costa. He's one of the greatest middleweights of all time. He's super well-rounded. He can grapple. He's an amazing amazing striker and he's going to be a real test for Hamzat Chemaev. I mean, first of all, when it comes to stamina, this is a five rounder. This is a five rounder for Chemaev and I'm not so I'm not sure Chemaev can last five rounds in the octagon. Um, so if Whitaker is able to, you know, show that experience and get the win over Chemaev after five rounds, I, I can definitely see Whitaker piecing him apart in the later rounds. And then when it comes to grappling, Whitaker's not just some guy with, you know, no grappling defense at all. I think it's going to be it's going to be tough for Chemaev to get going. Maybe Chemaev's going to be able to pull off a submission early on. But I'm picking Whitaker to win this fight. I really am. I think Whitaker is one of the most difficult fights for Chemaev in the division. And I feel like when it gets past the first two rounds, if Chemaev got finish him, it's going to get very similar to Usman versus Chemaev, except there's going to be an extra two rounds on the end, which is going to be extremely favorable for Robert Whitaker. And I think he's going to absolutely piece apart Hamzat Chemaev until he eventually gets a late finish in the fifth round. So I'm going fifth round TKO to Robert Whitaker. But let me know your thoughts on this fight, your thoughts on this fight night. I think it's stacked. I think he's one of the best fight nights that been announced and it's so glad to have a fight night like this announced after we get in fight night main events like Ribas versus Man and Namayuna so let me know your thoughts on the card and your predictions do you agree with my predictions but thank you for watching